you are going to watch a small part of my weekly show at Chess24. To get a full version, become a premium member using the short link bit.ly slash c24 premium. Enjoy. So this one was uh, composed uh, by Matosh in 1975. And we have more or less normal material balance here because uh, both sides uh, have queens and the minor piece. Well, both sides have some pawns. So uh, if compared to a uh, majority of uh, studies uh, dedicated to uh, the topic of the battery, um, here we have something more or less fine. Um, and now uh, let's start as usual with the understanding of what is going on on the board. So white definitely has very active pieces, much more active than black ones, right? Um, so uh, this bishop on d8 limits the activity of the queen. Uh, this bishop on d8 also controls very important e7 square. This bishop limits the activity of the knight as well. So the knight is definitely misplaced uh, out of play for sure. Um, white also has very active king here. So uh, this king uh, limits opponent's king. It controls a lot of important space. Um, the pawn on g6 is also very, very active itself, so uh, it is about, for example, to capture an h7 with the threat of uh, h8 queen, and so on. So there are a lot of different interesting things about white's pieces here. Uh, but white has to be very careful, uh, because black also has uh, different threats. For example, if uh, queen simply takes on a8 here, then black continues with the queen e6 check. And after uh, king g5, queen takes g6. So black has enough uh, material compensation for uh, missing minor piece. Moreover, white uh, no longer has pawns. So it is uh, not a big deal for black to, to make a draw here if he wants. Uh, the same is about, let's say, g7 move here. Uh, so king simply hides on g8. And now it's very hard for white to achieve anything. If queen takes a8, then queen e6 check. After king g5, let's say, queen e5 check. King g4, h5 check, so black has uh, a lot of different intermediate checks uh, prior to capturing this pawn on g7. And again, without pawns, white, of course, uh, has no chance to win. Uh, and finally, if g takes h7 here, creating a threat of h8, uh, then queen takes d8 check first. And uh, after king f5, king goes to g7, stopping the pawn. Uh, now black controls h8 square twice. Uh, so uh, the pawn is under attack, so there is no uh, chance for white uh, to do anything. Um, so black has easily winning position, right? So what to do in this uh, situation? So uh, everything uh, sensible uh, simply doesn't work, right? Uh, but let's remember our main topic. So our main topic is uh, the battery. So load the gun, how to load the gun, of course, with the help of queen c8 move. So queen c8, the difference uh, if compared to queen a8, if that queen from c8 still controls e6 square. So it is not possible to play queen e6. And uh, this means that uh, white has a very, very annoying threat. It is bishop to e7. Uh, black simply has no time for, uh, let's say, taking the pawn. So if h takes g6 or f takes g6, then bishop e7 wins instantly. With this, bishop e7, queen e8. Uh, if queen goes to e6, exchanging queens, then after queen e6, pawn takes and pawn takes g h7, uh, black can't stop the pawn h7. It's over, right? So after uh, queen c8, uh, what to do? Uh, the only sensible defense uh, is to escape uh, this thread of bishop e7 check. Otherwise, bishop e7 just decides, right? So the king goes to g8. Uh, now there is no check. There is no check, uh, so that bishop e7 uh, no longer works. And uh, for many uh, people, uh, it would be just uh, enough to understand that this queen c8 doesn't work. So white uh, has uh, nothing serious here. Um, so of course, white can check something in, um, uh, connected with checks here. For example, g takes f7 leads to queen f7 counter check, g takes h7. Uh, leads to a checkmate in several moves if king takes on h7, but king is not forced to take on h7, so it is possible just to hide in the corner and everything will be fine. So it looks like white has uh, nothing here. But in fact, uh, white has just enormous, uh, absolutely amazing uh, decision. So bishop goes to c7, all of a sudden, just sacrificing the queen, 
just sacrificing the queen uh, and uh, creating the threat of uh, g takes f7. This means uh, knight takes c7 simply doesn't work. So if knight takes c7 protecting the queen and grabbing the bishop, then g takes f7 wins. Fork, check, and takes the queen next move. So the bishop c7, queen takes c8. Only move, only sensible move uh, to meet all the threats. Now, uh, pawn takes on f7, check, forcing the king to the corner of the board. Because if king goes to f8, uh, then simply bishop d6 checkmate, the instant win, right? So, king goes to h8, uh, and now white loads the gun. So, the bishop goes to e5, creating a threat of uh, king to e7. At the same time, it is a threat of king to e6 if, let's say, queen doesn't control e6 square. It will be also checkmate. Uh, if pawn h7 moves, then there will be a chance to put the king on uh, g6. There is also a threat of king g5. So there are a lot of different squares, uh, including king f5 at some point, that the king can occupy, uh, and uh, in majority of cases it will be just a checkmate. Also, uh, we shouldn't forget uh, about f8 uh, threat, right? So if king... Uh, uh, doesn't uh, come up with the discovery check uh, and the queen for example doesn't control the back rank there will be a possibility let's say to finish the game with the f8 queen and in many cases it will be also checkmate there are a lot of uh, different threats right and again we have the same situation like uh, in previous studies um, so uh, white has very low material uh, but all these resources all these pieces are so perfectly coordinated and dedicated to one goal that uh, opponent simply has no enough uh, possibilities enough resources to stop white but position remains uh, really tricky so uh, as we already learned uh, today during this episode um, so usually there is a chance to deal with the uh, battery by attacking the piece uh, the main piece that creates a threat so here it is the bishop and uh, black has to deal with bishop somehow um, and the only move is of course queen to c5 because only this move guarantees that uh, the queen still controls f8 square so that prevents f8 uh, the queen controls uh, some squares that the king uh, could have occupied uh, but what is more importantly the queen challenges the bishop so uh, if uh, white's king uh, goes away somewhere let's say to e6 then after queen e5 uh, king e5 and king g7 black wins so black manages to stop the pawn, to blockade it if needed, and then uh, some of the pawns uh, decides. So uh, what to do after queen c5? Uh, definitely to go away with the bishop. And the bishop has only two squares uh, to go away along this diagonal because uh, d4 and c3 are controlled. So uh, we have only b2 and a1 left. So what to do? There is a choice between bishop uh, b2 and bishop a1 which move is correct so uh, when we deal with um, well uh, the similar situation over the board uh, when we have two lines uh, two possibilities that, that we simply uh, uh, can't estimate correctly uh, because uh, the difference is not clear uh, both look like the same right so we have to start calculating one line then another line uh, sometimes if you start with the correct one you don't need to calculate another one but if you start with not a correct one uh, then probably you will uh, find the difference and you will switch to uh, another one which will be correct uh, so uh, the incorrect one is bishop to a1 despite it looks very safe square uh, you have to understand what is going on uh, next so after both moves bishop b2 and bishop a1 let's start with the incorrect one uh, black will have only one defense. So now, as you can see, uh, the queen controls the fifth rank, so the king can't go to uh, g5, f5 squares. Uh, the queen also controls e7, uh, so that king can't go to e7. Uh, but e6 is not controlled, right? So if black manages to control e6 square, uh, the king uh, will be simply stopped. So uh, white will have no possibility to actually uh, checkmate uh, the king. So uh, knight goes to c7 to control uh, this square. So uh, either after bishop b2 or um, uh, bishop a1. 
So why bishop a1 is incorrect? Because after knight c7 we have to deal uh, with the problem, right? Since our king can't move, since f7, f8 makes no sense at the moment, uh, we have to wait, right? So we have to make waiting moves. So bishop goes to b2, opponent plays a4, and after bishop a1, opponent plays a3. And uh, we can notice that uh, our bishop is simply deprived of uh, moves, deprived of possibilities, and we lose the game. So that we come back to the bishop b2 line and start thinking about this. What is the difference? So knight c7, the same, bishop goes to a1, and after a4, bishop b2, a3, bishop a1, a2, and bishop b2, black is in Tuxwang. So black can uh, play a1, of course, but after bishop a1, black simply has no defense. Isn't it amazing? In my opinion, it is just, well, something great. Uh, once again, uh, white has only bishop, king, and pawn against uh, the pawn, queen, and knight, but white wins. So black has no defense. Black has no defense at all. So every move... Uh, makes position worse every move so um, if queen goes away somewhere from c5 square then white will have the possibility uh, to play f8 with checkmate or uh, to move the king somewhere so it's not possible to cover the fifth rank and uh, f8 square at the same time um, unless the queen is on c5 so let's imagine any square so let's say queen d6 then just king f5 that's it takes the queen, wins the game. So if queen goes to f8, let's say, uh, it is also important to, to find the correct square. I think the easiest one is just to put the king on f5, and after queen g7, just f8 queen, or rook uh, with the checkmate. That's it, game over. So if the knight moves, then uh, black loses the control over e6 square. So the main line goes uh, knight to d5, then king goes to e6, of course, check. It is possible uh, to play knight to c3, but after that, bishop takes c3, queen takes c3, and the queen loses the control over f8 square. So f8, queen, checkmates, finishes the game. Amazing, right? So I do appreciate this study. Uh, this study tells us a lot about the power of the battery. Uh, it um, explains uh, many different aspects of chess. Uh, the most important one, in my opinion, is just uh, uh, how to coordinate your pieces and how it is important to coordinate your pieces, how it is important to have uh, the harmony in your pieces placement. Because uh, let's have a look once again uh, at this position. So after uh, bishop b2. Um, the board is simply empty, right? The queen can occupy almost every square he wants. The knight is also uh, very, very uh, active at first glance. So there are a lot of different active possibilities at the very least. But black can't actually uh, move a single piece except for the pawn here. So black is um, completely paralyzed here. So the pawn moves, but then very soon the pawn moves. Um, are gone, so the pawn is uh, just eliminated, and that's it, game over. Amazing. To access more instructive chess videos, subscribe to my channel.